This is a quick tutorial on how to use the online normal distribution calculator. This is both for the normal curve and for the T distribution. The T distribution is something we'll get into in a later section, but understand you will use the same online calculator. Now, a lot of the instructions in the current course show instructions of the TI-84 graphing calculator. A lot of you don't want to invest in that, I completely understand, so there are other free online resources to use. This is one of them. Let's look at this real quick. Um, we're going to make sure that we understand we're using a normal distribution, so we want this top box up here clicked. Then we need to enter, enter our mean and our standard deviation. These are measurements that are going to be given to you most of the time. One of our problems said that we had a standardized test score with a mean of 63 and a standard deviation of 5. Now, we want to be able to calculate probabilities, because if you remember, um, calculate anything real quick, it's going to give me my mean down here of 63. This corresponds to the peak of the normal distribution. And then I start counting over in multiples of 5, and I count over multiples of 5 based on the standard deviation I'm given. And one of the examples said, what is the probability that of scoring, getting a score greater than 68? Well, here's my x is greater than. Let's go find out the probability of getting a score greater than 68. We'll click on the greater than box. Notice it shades this way. And the probability of getting a score greater than 68 is 0.158655. Again, remember in the videos you watched earlier, the total area under this curve is 1. So we expect the answer to be less than 1. We can change this value. You can find this probability of getting a score greater than a 65. Again, calculate it. Notice how this changes. Okay. Um, you can also define the probability of getting a score less than a value, say getting a score less than a 53. Notice how I'm now shading to the left. So please pay attention when you do the greater than or less than symbol. Okay. The less than will obviously be less than. The greater than will be more than, at least, things like that. The less than will be less than at most. We can also find getting uh, probabilities of falling between two numbers. So say I want to find the probability of falling between a 58 and a 68. Again, click on the appropriate one and calculate that. That's the probability of getting between a 58 and a 68 is 0.68. Now please notice also, say I want to get a score greater than a 90. it's going to come back with a zero, okay? Now this isn't necessarily 100% accurate because there is a very small probability of getting a 90, but basically if you look at the way this graph is done, it really gets very close to zero after three standard deviations. And that's one of the things we're going to focus on later is that anything that's more than three standard deviations from the mean is very it's not normal to see. Most of your scores are going to fall between three standard deviations of the mean. So 90 puts us way out close to five standard deviations. So let's say we pick an 80 instead. Notice how small that number is. 80 is just beyond three standard deviations. It's right about 3.4 standard deviations from to the right of the mean. The probability of getting a score greater than there is very small. Now let's say we want to do something a little bit different, okay? Let's say we want to find, instead of the probability, let's say we're given the probability. This is where we're going to do the inverse of the normal distribution. So we're going to take this right-hand column now, and let's say we want to score less than 50%. This is now going to give me this x value here, okay? To score less than a 50% means that x has to be less than 63, which makes sense because we know this normal distribution is symmetrical, so that means if I take the mean, which is the halfway point, I'd have to score less than the mean to get account for that 50%. Let's say I wanted to score less than 75% of everybody on the test. That means I'd have to score 66.37, and actually, excuse me, I would have to score at least a 66.37 to score more than 75% of the students on the exam. Please understand, you cannot put 100% here, because you can't score greater than yourself, okay? Remember, you are part of that testing process. 
come on here, mess with this. The link is in there for you. It's important that you get familiar with this. We'll be using this a lot, okay? So bookmark this and come back to it when you need it.